Hey everyone, it's Tom, WA2IVD. Welcome to video number 34 in our IC7300 from A to Z series. We're going to continue on with the CW functions that we started last time. We're going to first look at one more front panel button that uh, is specific to CW, the auto-tune button. And then we're going to jump right back to where we left off last time, starting to look at the keyer menu functions. Let's get to it. There is one more button on the front panel that we need to take a look at. And this is a button that does not change its function when you're in CW mode, but it actually only works or only functions when you're in CW. And that is this auto-tune button here. And it's pretty neat and uh, hopefully we'll get some CW long enough here. So if you press the button when you are near a CW signal it will... Nope, now he just stopped. Yeah, so you noticed that it moved over and then you got a low beep. I'm gonna wait till he comes back here. We may be cutting out some blank space here because the band is pretty quiet right now. There, we found somebody here. So if we press auto-tune, it will tune that so that it's right on the carrier, and that should now match the tone that we're hearing should be 750 hertz, which pretty close. Matches our, uh, should match our side tone almost exactly. I have found that when I press auto-tune sometimes, if there are, if the, the code is a little on the slow side, it will try tuning and then it'll kind of stutter and move back and forth. So sometimes you do have to press it a couple of times, but that's really it for auto-tune. It just auto-tunes a CW signal. And of course, if you have multiple ones around, it will get confused and won't know which one you're trying to tune to. So you do have to be a little careful about that. And it also won't tune if you're... So here, if I put this exactly halfway between, it doesn't really quite know what to do. So um, you need to be fairly close to the signal that you're trying to tune in. That's it for auto-tune. Now, another menu changes, and let's go back to CW here briefly. I'm sorry, to uh, sideband. And we'll look at the menu screen, and you've got... Uh, the sub-menus here, and the top center one you'll see is voice. That's the only one that changes in CW. Uh, and if we go to CW mode, that one changes to keyer. And there are some settings for that. You have eight memories. This is just like the voice memories, except these are now CW memories, so these are separate. We're going to skip those for the moment, and we're going to take a look at the edit and set menu. So you have edit, that's for editing those memories, and again, we will take a look at that. Um, this 001 set, that's also related to the memories for an auto increment number. Let's take a look at the CW and key set. So this actually brings you into another sub-menu sub of a couple pages. So side tone level, and then there's side tone level limit. This works just like the beep level and beep level limit we talked about in the previous episode if you want to go back and check out number 32 um, and oops and the side tone level uh, sorry let me get into that menu this is the side tone level not for the received frequency and actually let me let me tune off of this because that'll make it easier to hear the side tone level, sorry, let me get back into here, is the side tone level for your own keyer. So you notice you don't hear anything right now. And if we go in and turn it up to 100%, and then at 50%, and you're listening to this through my mixer, so my volume control is not going to have any effect on it. But the 100% versus uh, lower percentage will. And then just like with the beep function, 
there is a side tone level limit. Basically what this limits it to is if you turn the volume up, once you get past about halfway, um, and you can listen to it through the speaker now here. The volume doesn't get any louder as I turn the speaker up. Um, if I turn this off, then as I turn the speaker up, the side tone will go up to the maximum volume that the speaker will go up, or the, that the volume setting will go up to. So that's it for those. The keyer repeat time, this has to do with those keyer memories. If you activate one of the memories to continually repeat in a loop, this is the delay between each of the, between when it finishes and when it starts the next time. And again, we'll cover that a little more once we get into those memories. Dot dash ratio. The default is 1 to 1 to 3. So this is the dot, the space between a dot and, uh, or between a dot and a dot or a dot and a dash, and then the length of a dash. The standard for Morse code is that a dash is three times longer than a dot. You can set this from 2.8 all the way up to 4.5. Unless you have a strong personal preference, I don't really know why you would fool with this. I just leave it at the 3 to 1. Um, and then there is the rise time. Now, the default is actually 2 milliseconds. I've got mine set to 4. And you can go as high as 8. This is how quickly your transmit signal rises when you tap the key and it starts to transmit. This has to do with key clicks and chirping and... Because this is an, an SDR, your CW signal is going to be very clean, but you can actually delay it a little bit more if you want. One of the reasons, or you can delay the rise time of the carrier, um, depending on if you're using an external amplifier and what kind of ampli amplifier it is, you may want to have the rise time a little slower, or you may just have it for personal preference. Paddle polarity. So normal is the dashes are on the right and the dots are on the left. And then reverse is as you would expect. So mostly for left and right-handed people, or if you just have a preference to use the key a different way. Key type, I have mine set to paddle, which is what this is. So that's dots here, dashes here. A bug is uh, an older mechanical, for those of you not familiar with it. Vibroplex was probably the most famous one, and they're still out there and still make them. A bug was a mechanical keyer in the early days where the dots were created automatically, but dashes were still manual, so you would uh, do the dashes yourself. Yeah. So, terrible keying on my part, but that's what a bug is. And then, of course, there's a straight key, which I don't have a straight key here, but in a straight key, only one of the contacts works, and I think, yeah, it's the left side here. Straight key is just, if you're using a straight key, uh, and so on. So, if you had a straight key plugged in, you would set this to straight, and you'd wire it to the to the tip end of the quarter inch plug in the back of the radio. Um, now, one other cool feature here, there's mic up down keyer. And if you don't have a key and you're in some sort of situation where you need to work CW, um, you can turn this on, the default is off. But with this turned on, then with your microphone, the up and down buttons on the top of the microphone actually become buttons for a keyer. So, um, well, let's see here. Oh, I know why that didn't seem to be working right, because I left this as a straight key. So let me put that back to paddle. Now I've got the mic up down keyer on, so I have my dash is here and my dots here so uh, let's
let's see. Well, that was close anyway, for those of you that uh, do CW. So, in a pinch, you can actually use the buttons on your microphone as a keyer. Now, when you have this function on, then these buttons will not work for any of the other. They won't turn the frequency up and down when you're out of this menu, or even if you're in upper sideband or, you know, some other mode. Uh, these will not change frequency or change memory, so you need to remember that. And in fact, if you are trying to use the microphone buttons and they don't seem to be working, you might want to come in and check this menu. And as another key point, remember this menu only shows up if you're in CW mode. So, uh, something to look for. That's about it for the keyer, the basic keyer functions and the paddle settings and what you can do with the keyer. Next time we'll take a look at the memories and setting them and some of the features that you can do with that. Well, that's all we're going to tackle for this time. Next time we'll cover the keyer memories and hopefully finish up the CW functions. If you find these videos useful, please click on the like button. And I'm always happy to see comments if you have any corrections, suggestions, or just plain questions. If you find the channel useful and you'd like to be notified when more videos come out, please consider subscribing. One way to do that is by clicking on the icon that will pop up on the lower right toward the end of the video. As always, thanks for watching. I'm Tom, WA2IVD, and this is Ham Cured Smoke.